For November, I'm doing a little reset inside of my planner. In October, I took the time to assess what was working inside of my planner, what wasn't working inside of my planner, what needed to be added, what needed to be removed. And from that, we're gonna do a little reset. And I'm, I've added some sections inside of my planner. I've taken some sections out of my planner. I have made some big changes in the way that I plan content because now I'm gonna be doing it digitally, which I will show you in just a minute. But first, let's talk about the physical planner. So this is my planner. It is from the Happy Planner and I have multiple planners from them inside of here. But the discs are from the Happy Planner, so is the cover. Unfortunately, this cover is no longer available. It is literally one of my favorite covers. It's like thick, it's good, it's quilted. It's got a fun um, stitched quilted pattern on there. It's black, which really speaks to my soul. So this is the physical planner that I'm gonna be doing. And what I'll do is I'm gonna show you inside of this, take a little tour of it, the reset that I done, and then I will show you how I am digitally planning content. Everything inside of here minus these sticky notes are from the Happy Planner. So I'll have their website linked down below. So we open this thing up. First thing, we have sticky notes that I use throughout the entire planner. We have a name page, which I did not write on. This one, just on the back of it, has the 2022 year at a glance. I don't do anything with that. Now this first section, this is where I block schedule my day. And if you're new to block scheduling, what it is is planning out chunks of time to complete the tasks that you have planned for the day. Now I use block scheduling along with batching whenever I'm doing something. So what does that mean? Batching is where you take like items and you put them together and you do them all at once. So I guess my best example for this because we all can kind of relate to this is whenever you're cleaning. So let's say you just have a block scheduled for two hours for cleaning. You're not just going to clean off the counters, you're gonna clean the kitchen, you're gonna maybe get the bathrooms, throw in some laundry before you start, that way you can get it flipped over into the dryer before you're finished. You're doing like items together in a chunk of time. One of the big things that I've been batching here recently and it's been working amazingly well is content for you guys. So for example, right now we're in this um, block down here and I am filming videos. So for three hours I'm filming videos today. I actually have three videos that I wanna film. I'm trying to get myself a little bit ahead of schedule so if um, I have a migraine or if something flips off schedule, it's not putting me behind and making me stressed out. Now a tip I have for you whenever you block schedule, do all your plans in a black pen and then go back in with any color you want to. I'm just using red for this week because that's what I grabbed, but go back in with a different colored pen and write in what actually happened versus what was planned. This is going to help in a couple of ways. One, you're gonna see, am I actually doing the things that I'm planning on doing? And if you're not, that's a great time to assess why. But what it also does is it helps you learn how much time it actually takes to do something. For example, from 12.30 to about 1.30, 2 o'clock, I was going to film and edit reels for Instagram. However, that actually took me until four. I was, I mean, I don't even know what I was thinking, thinking, giving myself just that short amount of time to uh, film them because I'm, I'm not new to reels, but I haven't done reels in such a long time. I had to relearn how to edit them, finding the music, all the things. So it took me a lot longer. And that's where I took the red pen and I wrote in there how long it actually took and what happened. Because I was supposed to start filming videos from 1.30 to 3.30. But because I'm behind, I changed it and I'm actually filming now from 4 to, I'm gonna go until 7 tonight because I went ahead and added another video that I needed to film. So. I gave myself an extra hour. So let's take an overview look at this for just a second. This side is just notes, things that pop up inside of my head, things I need to do at some point during the week. I just kind of quickly jot those down over here, right? But I've also gone ahead and wrote in some stuff for next week. So let's take a look at Monday. Monday was supposed to be content planning day. What I had planned on doing Monday was planning content for the rest of October and for all of November. This included my YouTube videos, my Instagram posts, my Instagram reels, and starting to work on planning for Pinterest. Now I knew that this was going to take pretty much all day because this was, I'm, you know, I was working on a new planning system, a digital system, trying to get that set up. I was also coming up with ideas, trying to get myself organized, straightened out all the things. So that's basically what my plan was for all of Monday. However, I've had a migraine since Saturday. So I didn't do any of that on Monday. So I literally just wrote in red ink migraine. Now Tuesday's a little different. 
I'm a nurse, I work in a hospital, I work seven to seven, so I'm working 12 hour shifts, and I don't really plan anything else while I'm in the hospital. So the plan for Tuesday was to work. However, I've had a migraine, like I said, since Sunday, and I'm finally, about Tuesday evening, started to actually feel better. So I wrote migraine in red, and then I also wrote kind of what we did. We, we rested, like I literally hung out all day, um, tried to drink plenty of water, that sort of thing. And then I also did a little bit of planning in a sauna that evening once I started to feel better. But here's today, this is Wednesday. So um, what I have up here, and this goes for any day of the week, not just today, but what I put up here is typically my daily big three. So my three top priorities, my three goals for the day. Now this one's a little different because I am creating content all day. And I know that this takes hours, it takes most of the day, it wipes me out mentally. So I just have that one as my priority today. These two little boxes here, what I've been writing in here is that I need to check a sauna and then I need to do my workout. And then if we look kind of towards the end of the week, I know that Saturday and Sunday I work. These are my, this is my weekend to work. And then I have a sticky note here that I need to see my home health patients on Friday. I don't have time scheduled for those yet, but once I do, I will write in the times of when I'm seeing each patient. So that's a look into the block scheduling section. And here I have the this current month, and I didn't even date it, but I have this current month, and I also have the upcoming month for block scheduling in here. And these are just some um, pages that come with the block scheduling insert from the Happy Planner. I don't use all of these. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but it's mainly these pages right here that I'm using to block schedule. From there, we go over and I went ahead and took October out because I actually did not use my happy planner for this current week, which is the last week of October. So I went ahead and took it out and I left November in here because obviously I'm gonna be using it for November. So this one is the dashboard planner, literally my favorite layout. So when we first open it up, you have your monthly section. I don't know that I'll be using this. I might, I might not. I was using a desk calendar. However, because of Asana, I'm not using that now. So. I don't know if I'm gonna use this or not, but this is the dashboard layout. And like I said, it's my favorite. And I love it because it already has some structure to it. You don't have to use anything that's already set up on the page. So just keep that in mind. So what I do is I take boxes and I cover up where it says errands, get it done, noted, calls, emails, or I'll decorate this page a little bit. And then I use this section over here to plan my day. Now, I'm not planning my day as far as content goes inside of this section. This is where I'm planning for personal things, things for my son, things for my husband, um, things I need to get done for work. So for example, with my home health patients, if I need to chart, if I need to contact the case manager, things like that are gonna go inside of this section of the planner. So I have November in here, and then I also have December. And then the next section has been added. This one is for fitness. So. I recently posted a video, it was about the haul and how I started Mount Jaro and I'm on this weight loss journey. And I need a way to track all the little things that I'm doing each and every single day. So this is my fitness section and what I'm using is the teacher planner from the Happy Planner. Now I have a video coming up showing you how to plan in a teacher planner. So I'm not gonna go through that just yet. I'll actually show you how I'm planning for it for this current week in that video. So make sure you watch out for that. But the purpose of this is to track the little things I'm doing each and every single day because I have a memory keeper that I'm using to kind of pull it all together and track the bigger moments. So for example, here's a, a week that I completed inside of here. This one I have um, notes on the weight loss that I've done on pictures of workouts. I've got little pull up tabs here that's got some notes on it, some journaling inside of here, talking about things. We've got some tags, uh, more tags. This one's really fun. This one, you pull it out and it's got the weight that I lost and my pictures of my scale. So this one is how I'm documenting, yes, the little things, but also the bigger things that's happening. So for example, here, I wanna be able to document my water intake, the workout that I did, what I'm eating, and then I might also track a little bit, like a little note of the day or something, some journaling in there. But this is where the, the bigger kind of things go and where I can document more and keep track of the entire journey. I guess another way to kind of put it, one of the things that I will talk about inside of here, because this is like a big moment, is that since I've been losing weight and since I've been exercising and eating better and drinking water, my anxiety has gone down so stinking much. 
So that's a big win for me. So I'll put that in here. But then I also put the smaller wins, my workouts. I have journaling of things that's happened. Stuff like that goes inside of here. But this is where I want to tra track the day-to-day -day things that are happening. This right here is a um, an inspiration board that I created. And I have a video of how I made this up here on YouTube. And I will have that link down below in the description box. So that's the teacher planner that I'll be using to track fitness. The next one is meal planning, which, you know, is what it is. It's meal planning. But this is where I'll plan out our meals for the week or when I'm meal prepping, what I need to meal prep, that kind of thing will all go inside of this section. And then last but not least, we have a section for notes. So I just have note paper back here. Some notes already are already in here, but that section's for notes. And then I do have a pin loop on here that I use. The pin loops are from Amazon. They're amazing. I will also have those linked down below in the description box if you wanna check it out. So that is my physical planner and how I'm using it. All right, now let's take a look at Asana and I'll show you how I'm using it as a digital planner. Now, Asana is not a digital planner. It's a project management tool. However, I'm using it as a digital planner. So I have my laptop here. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So here is my content calendar. This is where I'm planning out content for YouTube, Instagram, and for Pinterest. Now you're only gonna see YouTube and Instagram on here because I'm, I'm kind of getting some templates ready for Pinterest and getting behind the scenes things happening before I'm actually posting on there. So there's no content planned for that. But what I've done is I've color coded everything. The teal blue collars, these are for my YouTube videos. You can see here in November, we have up until November the 25th planned out for YouTube. The lime green, these are Instagram posts. The darker green is Instagram reels. Now, both of those are related to Instagram, the reel and the post, but I wanted them separate colors so I could quickly look at it and know, oh, hey, this is a post or hey, this one's a reel. So that's why I color coded those two differently. Now I'm putting my work schedule inside of Asana because that does dictate a lot. Again, I work 12 hour shifts. I'm not able to get anything else done on those days. I mean, I can, I could work myself to death if I wanted to, but I don't want to do that. And most of the time, whenever I get home from work, I'm hanging out with my kiddo, cooking dinner, sometimes um, eating, hanging out, whatever, doing a workout after work, that kind of thing. So that's it. I don't, I don't get inside of here. I typically don't even get inside of my planner unless I'm looking ahead at plans for the next day. So that's why my work schedule is in here. It's very, very important. If I'm working three days in a row, which you can see here, I'm not going to be working on any type of content. So this is my content calendar. Now, if we look over here to this side, I have my content calendar here. I have YouTube. So this is where I have YouTube broken down into, um, I have four different categories on here, but these are video ideas that I have that I've started to come up with and I've stuffed them all inside of here so everything is inside of one place and I'm not hopping into this planner or over here in this notebook or in this binder back to the computer to try to find video ideas. I already have everything inside of one, one place. One section is all nice and organized. I've got scrapbooking video ideas, things that I want to talk about with my craft room and then December daily is coming up soon so I did make a section for, for that so I could um, put in some video ideas there. This one down here is Instagram content. These are post ideas, these are real ideas. So I just have those listed out as well. And then back up here at my content calendar, there's a couple of things that we need to look at. So I showed you this section, this is the actual calendar. Most of the time, what I do in here is I just click and I'll just type in something. I'll open this up. Now let's say that this is a YouTube video. What I'll do is I hit tab and T, which creates tags and I've tagged everything and this is how it gets its color coding. So IG Reel, IG Post, this is for YouTube, this is my um, work schedule. So let's say this one's a reel. You can also get to tags by clicking the three little dots and then adding tags up here. But this is what I do and I make notes inside of here. I will add little subtasks if I need to. Everything that I need to plan out for here is, you know, right here in this little section. So that's one way that I do it. Let's delete that task because I'll be like, what am I talking about? Now, the other thing that I do here is see how this says to do today. And this one says to do today. So this is where I've created subtasks for the things that I'm doing. This looks like a lot. I know, 
but remember I'm batching everything and I'm block scheduling everything. So I'm making adequate time to get these tasks done. Again, these are the tasks that are not going inside of my physical planner. I wanted my content section to be something totally different and have its own space to live in. And that's why I went with Asana. Now for like this one, I like the board view so I can see the different ones. And from here, let's say I want to um, schedule this video in YouTube. I can click on this. I can click a due date. So let's say this is due December, November the 1st, if I could talk. I'm gonna assign it to myself because then it shows up in my tasks over here. But here under projects, we can add a new project and I'm gonna click content calendar. Let's do this so we, I can show it to you guys. We scheduled that for the first. So content calendar, and then I'm gonna add a tag. The tag is going to be for YouTube. And then I can just click off of that. Now if we go over here to my content calendar, we're looking at the calendar section. If we go to November 1st, you're gonna see it right here. It's scheduled. And it already has tags in it. It shows up in the content calendar. Everything's here that I need. So that's a quick look at how I use Asana. I'm genuinely excited for this. I'm so glad to have my content, everything, in one section. I was, you know, I had it all inside of my planner, which isn't bad. It was a, it was a decent system. However, it was taking so much longer to rewrite some of the things that I needed to write down. Here I can have templates out, so I just copy and paste those. It's much easier. I can add all kinds of things into one item. So like I said, adding those subtasks, adding descriptions, notes, things like that. When in here, you can do that. It just feels a little bit more chaotic and overwhelming and I'm flipping back and forth through different sections trying to pull all of my content in. And I also like Asana because, um, for example, coming in the spring, I signed up to teach classes with a company called Big Picture Classes and I'm really excited for that, but I have some deadlines coming up in the spring. And I like to go ahead and be able to add those into the calendar, you know, into next year, kind of planning, looking ahead. So then whenever we start to come up on those deadlines, I can have reminders in here. I can go ahead and put tasks that need to be done for next year inside of here. So I think that this system is going to work much better. I'm committing myself to using this for the rest of 2022. In December, I'll reassess everything. I'll reassess my planner. I'll reassess um, Asana if it's still working. I'll continue using that in 2023. Now my planner, I'll probably reassess it at the end of November. I've been doing these monthly assessments to see what's working, what's not, what I need to change or keep the same. And that's been, that's been very, very helpful. So that's my little planner reset for November. I'm excited to see how this goes. If you guys want an update in December, let me know if you guys wanna know if this stuff is working. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask down below. All right, planner babes, I will see you in the next video.